was. No, yes, wasn't. it wasn't. That's not what Ridgewood got. That's what you're saying. You, you put it next to Ridgewood. That's not what they got. We, we pattern the uh, agreement in, in a manner that is very close to the, to the Ridgewood agreement. But listen, let me answer your question. Listen, um, if your perception is that um, I've been an impediment relative to what it is your organization is actually negotiating for, all right, then the good news is I'm out, right? So that, yeah. that's what you all do. Yeah. So um, I guess you guys should look at it as an opportunity to make an actual bona fide offer, which you haven't done. If you'd like to come and make a comment, you need to come up to the microphone, please. Thank you. So I still don't really understand. So you, you're you're negotiating on behalf of the residents of town, but yet, who do you think you're supporting? All the public support seems behind us. Everyone who speaks publicly is supporting the teachers. I haven't had one person come out publicly in support of uh, the board. It's all been in support of the teachers. So who are your constituents that you're negotiating for? I, I don't quite understand that. Um, I. So I'm sorry that you haven't seen a lot of people show up here. No, no, no one has seen those people. Show us. Okay, I, it's not my responsibility to produce no, testimonials at, at every board meeting associated with what's going on. We did have someone come in and ask about the taxpayers, so, the, the ratification of the ta on the taxpayers. Right. We did have someone come. We had other people talking to us uh, about taxes and what's going to happen to them. And we're all in support of the teachers. So I, I don't like to see that it's a you against us. Yeah, see, the problem with the whole we're all in support of the teachers thing is you say it a lot, and I, I believe a lot of you, but you haven't shown us in any way besides saying that you're in support of the teachers. I mean, now, I don't know all the particulars as far as the, the money and, and, and how it has to be handled. So anyone that's on the negotiation, who's not on the negotiation committee can't answer those questions. But we know that we're trying to negotiate, you know, fairly with you, and we hope that you're trying. The deals to negotiate on the table will all hurt us. That's a fact. The Are deals you? on the table would all hurt we, us. We'd like you to come back with something to give us to counter what we've yeah. done. That would be great, and then we can go from there. It's been. I know, but it doesn't matter how long it's been. Of this. But it doesn't matter how long yeah. it's been. If we could get another deal from you guys to counter what we've been putting out okay. there. That would be a way where we would be able to move forward. Right now, it's sort of stagnant, and I don't think either side is happy with what's happening right yeah. now. Yeah, can you define what the term net zero means as far as negotiations? Anyone? Stagnation. No, no, no. As far as negotiations, we were told that this board would not entertain any idea that wasn't net zero, which means you're not willing to put forth one extra penny towards the contract. Then you need to look at the, the last couple of proposals that we put forth. If, yeah, but that's, if that hasn't been, been made available to you, then I can understand the solution. Are you, do you understand that those offers, if we accept them, financially, for me personally, will hurt me? I will have less money to pay my bills at home. Do you understand that? Let's go back to what you said. Hold on a second. Do you yes. want, okay, so you yes. understand that the contract you offered us would hurt me financially. Why would but I you know, accept wait, 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 that? Back up, back up, back up. The, the last two... We've made sure that everyone is net. Not true. Paid. That doesn't count. Uh, you did not include the rise in health care costs. It's not true. People would be hurt by those. You deals. know what? If, if if everything that we say, you say, you know, you guys are liars. Then this is really sort of a, a, a silly conversation. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. All right. Well, you know what? It, it's it's difficult to have a conversation when the converse, when, when the response is you're a liar. Because that's that's not the case. That's not the case. The last the last uh, proposals that we put forth, everyone is net ahead. And the problem that we have, yeah, how net ahead? Yes. Let me show you my my, uh, my checks that I bring home. Okay. If, if you, the proposals, if you want to talk, the proposals that we've put forth don't don't have any effect on the the checks that you're getting right now. The checks you're getting right now, yeah. And they're, they're less because health care is going up, and since we haven't come up with a, with a contract that works for both sides, you haven't gotten a raise. So it's a mathematical problem. But you have to come up to the microphone, sir. Please. Please, if you, need, if you want to speak to someone, would you please? Um, you're going to have to leave the room if you don't come up to the microphone. If you want to talk, please come to the microphone. You're more than welcome. Uh, 
Elizabeth Drazdik. I've been teaching in Mawa for 11 years, and now I'm also a resident of Mawa. So um, my question for you, Ms. Barron, is how are committees formed? Can you explain to us the process of, is it voluntary? Are there prerequisites so that moving forward, everybody's clear on how these committees are formed and if there's any other interest involved in that? Oh, they're voluntary. Everybody um, would, would let me know what they would be interested in doing and if they have expertise in a certain area. Um, for the most part, those people would gravitate toward whatever committee um, that they would be interested in. And then a decision is made with me and my executive committee. So does everybody here have then a vote? Is no. there? There's no vote. You just say, like, I want to do this. Sometimes we only get one person who wants to be on a committee. Yes. Sometimes we get four people that want to be on a committee. We know how that is because this is a very difficult job. We have the same problem. Yeah. Um, but I would ask that moving forward, having students enrolled in this district be a good prerequisite for serving on um, committees that involve the students of Mala. That's just my request. Thank you. Please keep that in mind. Thank you. We will. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Bill Howe, Vice President of the MEA, mostly negotiator. I'll have to watch what I have to say at different times, but thank you. Um, I've actually been working here for about 17 years, and those of you uh, who I've had your children know my dedication to what I do in education. Uh, when I first started here, there was, it was, I would honestly say, I did not think it was a great program. Uh, I live in Alta Pan. I would tell people, oh, we have so much a better, better school. And I wouldn't say that a lot, because I want to be respectful where I was working. And honestly, it has changed over the years, and I'm very happy for that. And obviously the people back there are working very hard to do that, and we've had a number of people who put tremendous effort in the administration. We're very appreciative that we all were able to work together. And I've noticed in the last couple of years that my passion for talking about Mawa is being a community member. And I've always said it's almost like I work for the town, I'm part of the town, I live in the town. And I always have said that, even though I don't live here. I've always believed it and lived my life like that. The last couple of years that doesn't seem to be the case in my own heart. I don't feel I could go out and tell people this. And I know this is not a numbers discussion. I understand that. And I apologize if it's not a numbers discussion. But this is part of what actually gives us our dedication to the students in the, in the school district. We give it all that we can. I'd be willing to jump in front of the door to take a bullet for the kids. That's the type of life we live. And we've always believed in it. And now in the last few years, we don't feel like that that is occurring to us. I actually had the other day someone said, well, what is it like to work there? And I started biting my tongue, which is the first time this ever happened. I don't felt like I ever had to say that. And I ended up saying, you know what? It's really not a great place to work anymore. We have a, don't have a good relationship with the board. I actually had said that. And those of you who had my children know that's not my style. I don't live like that. I believe in trying to work things out. So if you start getting people like myself and others who are so dedicated, who start to have a change in attitude, there is a problem. And in the long run, it will hurt. Now, I understand there's financial considerations. We all recognize that. We also have major financial considerations. And I think there might be some difficulties in even the information being a negotiator. We've heard net zero. And so we've heard that since the beginning. And now we hear, well, no, you actually were given some other options. And we keep hearing net zero, which means basically we are on the downfall. I'm down $8,200 to $8, a year after net pay. That's a tremendous amount of money for me to absorb. And I'm never going to get a bonus. I'm never going to get extra money. If I take the bullet for the kid, they can say, oh, he's a great guy. And that's the end of it. And I get my life insurance. So there is not the opportunity for us to make the, any of these things up besides through negotiation. We like to try to work it out. It's very much an animosity right now. We're not getting along well. It is not moving forward. We feel that we're not getting any forward motion. It's a net zero. And to us, that is very hurtful. So those are the two points I wanted to make. And I think the one that affects me the most is the idea that I've, in a way, I've changed my attitude about the community that I've given to, that I loved. And I don't even live here because, in a way, I do live here every day. And so I want you to take that into consideration. It is an important thing for all of us, what we try to do here. And we give every single day to the kids in all our ways. And we would just like to see the similar respect and a similar opportunity to work things out and make things work. At this point, it's not. Thank you. This is Jean, trifecta, parent, teacher, resident. I haven't talked in a while, so I'm due, okay? 
Um, I just want to respond to Mr. De Silva's comment that even though this contract thing you said that is not affecting us right now, it really is. I have lost nine over nine thousand dollars in my take-home pay in five years. Wait, let me finish. Thank you. And I'm paying over eleven thousand dollars for my family for medical. So it has affected me. So do not say that it has not affected me. It's affected me, my family, my son who wants those Kobe sneakers for his birthday and Christmas combined that I can't afford to give him. Okay, so it's affecting all of us. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to quote, I wrote it down because I don't, my memory is going as in my old age. Quiet. Um, the fact of the matter is that Mawa schools are at the top of the class in recent state and national rankings according to U.S. News and World Report because we have exceptionally talented and ridiculously dedicated teachers, period. End of conversation. So what, what have you specifically done, besides the beautiful words that we love and we love to hear, but what are the actions behind those words? Negotiation-wise. So negotiation-wise, um, I can tell you that it, it's, it's difficult when, for instance, it's been a month since we put forth two proposals, and we didn't get any kind of response at all. Yes, you and, did. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't until earlier this week when the response when the response was we just we we're going to decline to counter. That was the response we got, and so now we are pushed off beyond December until we have a, a super conciliator until sometime in either January or February. So that's another, that count three months that we're just not even talking because we put something forth and the association has declined to respond. Declining to okay, respond. Okay, so we are not an association. I, I, I we are people. I, we are, but we're people. Okay. But we are hurting. I understand that, but the negotiation is with the association. Okay. Right? Yes. So when the association declines to respond or to hold up a their part of the conversation in order to work these things out, it's difficult to negotiate when only one side is throwing stuff out there and the other side is just not responding. Yes, so it is difficult to negotiate so one-sided, so yes. So it's, so it's very, you know, I, there's not a whole lot that we can do if we throw things out there and, hey, how about this, and we don't get a response. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if I could clarify what, what you said before about not affecting not affecting you guys because this is this is an important point. I was responding to the gentleman who said when I was talking about the offers that we put forth, the gentleman was talking about his current paycheck and my That's my, my current paycheck. No, I understand that, but my when I said what what, what the current offers are haven't affect, don't affect your current paycheck because they haven't yet because they haven't been accepted. So we're talking about two different things. No, it's actually the same because my current my paycheck after this will be even less. Because, so because right, because the proposals haven't, there haven't been, has not been an accepted proposal. Once there's an accepted proposal, then it will affect your paycheck. Yeah, until, it will go down even more. No, it's not. Yes, it it won't. Yes, it, will. it won't. Yes, it is. You don't understand the percentages of healthcare. You don't understand how that works. I, I do understand so how it works. goes up by 10 grand, and I have, won't you, my paycheck Could you come to the microphone, I, please? I, 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 no, do you know the percentages, how that works? I do. Right. I so do. If, healthcare, if healthcare goes up by $10,000 next year, right. will my raise counter that healthcare increase because if I'm not tier four? As far, no, no. no, wait a minute. Dude, you're, you're talking about your income or your take home pay because they're Same No, they're not. Okay, let's go they're with take home pay. Bills. Okay, let's take home pay will go down. Okay. And that's. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is. That is Correct. It is all that matters to you, but what you have to understand is we don't have any control over how much health care goes up. No, but you can increase higher salaries. We have a mathematical equation. We, we can only increase our, our, our operating budget by 2% every year. That doesn't include health care. That, that, all right, so there are loopholes no, that we no, can use. That doesn't Andy. include health care. I, I include promise healthcare. not to interrupt you if, you, if right. I extend the same courtesy. Okay. So there are loopholes that we can use to increase our operating budget beyond 2%. That's, that's something that we can do. Now, when Chuck was talking about fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers, that's a commitment that we made to the taxpayers to, to remain within 2%. That's party so, politics. That has nothing no, to do with it, it's not politics. It's, it's not politics. It, I'd like to amplify on what Rick is talking about in terms of net pay positive. We've been talking about net pay positive 
I've been on the negotiation committee just since January, and we've been talking net pay positive the entire period. So somebody threw out the term net zero. I'm not really sure what that means. We've never discussed net zero. Um, we've been trying in is very hard, and and there was some disparaging remarks made about Mr. D uh, Salderini, who I can tell you in the entire time that I've been on the negotiations committee, Chuck has been dedicated to creating ways to find money in in any way possible to increase the value of the settlement. Um, so you may think that Mr. Saldarini's departure in January is a good thing for you, but I can tell you that he's been responsible for most of the best ideas we've had to get more money into the agreement. So, and let's get back to net pay positive. So before there was the illustration of what happens next year. So let's say, for example, there's a 10% increase in the cost of health care next year. So if you were paying I'm going to use round numbers because it will make it easier. If you were earning $100,000 last year and you were paying $10,000 in health insurance, your health insurance bill is going to go up by 10%, $1,000. If you take the deal that uh, essentially we offered, your pay is going to go up by $3,000. So as far as I'm concerned, you're up $2,000. That's not true. Well, I'm just... Do the math yourselves. I invite, you to, I, invite, I invite you to do the math yourselves. A 3% increase on $100,000 is how much? Wait, do you understand? How much is a 3% increase on a hundred thousand? Do you understand how a salary guy works? Not everybody gets Do you understand? No, no, I know, but I'm just giving you an illustration. No, 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 but that's, 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 not, a, that's not a small point that Mr. Silver just made. It's not 3%. It's not like, with all due respect, administrators, well, there's any how other administrators you are increase and all the other <laughs> it's not. It's not 3% for me. It's not 3% for Rich. It's not 3% for every single person. No, it isn't. But on average, it's 3%. No! no. It is this, is, this is really the fundamental percent. problem. If we don't understand how the 2% cap works, if we don't understand we, the increase in health care costs, if we don't understand how our salary guide works, we are fundamentally I, I at the best, which is why we're going to super I understand how so the hopefully, I, hopefully, we can make some progress. I understand how the salary guide works, and I understand how the average works. Your answers indicate otherwise. No, I'm just giving you an illustration. If we had a guide here and we took an individual employee, we could do the same illustration. This is horrifying. It's okay. 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 Thank you. Just, just quick as a taxpayer. Okay. I just ask uh, what the 1.783 million was, right? The 1.896 million was. If you add the 1.5 million that you put into the cap reserve, you're running, you're running a surplus every year of three million dollars. You're increasing our taxes by two percent. So. Bottom line to me is, you're three million dollars excess. Hi, I'm John Snow, and I work at the Round Ridge Middle School. First of all, I'd like to uh, extend an apology to Mr. De Silva. To be honest with you, uh, I've been working here for like 14 years. The first seven years of my career here, I used to say this was the best place to work ever. Like, I loved coming here. And I also want to extend an apology because I, I have no gift for public speaking, and I apologize if I come across as aggressive, um, especially to our administration with Dr. Sean and Mr. Fair, because um, on an individual basis, you two have done a lot for me. Ms. Sean, you'll never understand what you did for my family, and I need not to say that to you. The time that you've taken to talk to me about a PhD, like that tells me everything I need to know about you as a person and as a leader. And I'm not going to call you Mr. Fair because honestly, we've worked together for so long. You're a great guy. I, I look at this board, and, and to me, it's such a shame because a school board was never meant to be adversarial towards the staff. That's not the function of it. That's the reason why you don't have uh, police departments having boards and, and fire departments because it, it's not meant to be that way. It's supposed to work towards the betterment of the children and to make sure that you have the best school system humanly possible. We're not good. And first off, I don't 
no offense, I, I don't care what your opinions are about us as teachers. The state, the nation, has already said, we're not good, we're not great, we're elite. Elite. So if you take it from a business standpoint, because I know you guys are businessmen, and I'm not trying to attack you, I understand that I happen to be passionate about this, and you're trying to be reserved. But from an, a business standpoint, we are Microsoft, we're Yahoo, we're, we are the top. We're not some small little, we're the best of the best. And what I have seen, and Mr. Gala, again, I'm not trying to attack you at all, I don't, I don't know you as a person, I'm sure you're a, a very nice person. You coming and saying, well, I don't even know if there is an issue at the schools in, in terms of morale or that we're losing people. I can tell you, because I, I work with these people day in and day out, there is, it is massive. We are losing people. And here's the thing that you don't get. Because teachers have been under attack for the better part of a decade, the national average of people going into education is going down and down and down and down and down. So there's not that many applicants. And guess what? Whereas Mawa, when I first came, I went from Madison, which is ranked higher than we are. I had like an $8,000 pay increase. Now, that wasn't the reason why necessarily I came here. Stu Sokin sat me down and he was like, this is a family. We're not going to be able to pay you as well as everyone else, but I swear you will love working here. And I did my first seven years. I had never seen you at the Rampo Ridge, not once. And I've heard you on three separate occasions on these YouTube saying, well, I don't know if there's any uh, morale issue or, or people leave. No, if you want, we can take the quotes. Okay. We'll play. It'll be embarrassing. But here's what I'm going to say to you. Last year alone at the Ridge, we lost our principal, who was 48 years old. This guy was as good as it gets. As good as it gets. And it wasn't because he suddenly loved North Carolina that he left. We lost our nurse, our crisis counselor, a guidance counselor, three supervisors, a math teacher. These are, if you want, you can go and you can check this. So right off the bat, just for one school, we lost that. That is a crisis mode for a year. Never mind the fact, if I brought you our, our staff photo from 2011, we lost 48% of people that were in that photo that are no longer in this district. We've had people who are exceptional at what they do leave. And they say, and it's not even now that they're going up to administration, either they're leaving the occupation because it's, it, it's horrendous, or they're going to other districts. And eventually it's going to come a point, and you're going to be the one sitting here when the, everyone has left, and our test scores start to go down, and all of a sudden people are saying, well, what happened? It's because the best and the brightest no longer come here. And in education, it's very, very simple how a society works. If the foundation of the next generation coming up, their education isn't superior to the next level, you go backwards. We have lost, we had such a reservoir of talent. I don't know if you guys, if you really understand what you did. History will tell you, it, it's going to be catastrophic. We had such a reservoir of talent. Mahalo is going to coast for the next 30 years. We've lost so many teachers, and I know because I personally, I go to their weddings, I, I hang out with them. I'm not sitting there behind a desk. I'm telling you right now. Unless you change this stance, you're going to see what happens. We're going to start going down. We're already trending, we're, we're trending downward. You know that, right? I mean, you, you, you know the stats. I mean, they, they put them out. I mean, you can Google it. What more do you want? We are elite. You're a businessman. If you have somebody who's the best of the best, do you give them a pay cut or do you give them a raise? Do you say to them, hey, great job, let's make your lives better? Or do you not only put more on their plate, but you take money away? You, you, you guys know that you had that, that money. You know what you've done. You, you, you had this, you, you took $1.5 I don't know what you did. I'm not, a, I'm not a businessman. I didn't get into this for making money. I got in this for your kids. And to be honest with you, Mr. Salarini, I respect you as a politician. I really do. I think you are very good at what you do. I think you negotiate around. But when your children were in our school district, we didn't, I didn't even know your name. It was, there was boo. We were great. And now all of a sudden, every year, I've taken a pay cut for the last six years. The last six years. I have a family. I want to put my kids to, through college like you put your kids through college. And I don't understand. I don't understand why you would do this to us. 
why you are making this scenario so hard. We want to be, have you noticed that when the people aren't on trips anymore, they're not at dances, the, the middle school doesn't even have sports night anymore. We used to have the Patrick Rowe Foundation basketball. The, the place was packed. Sports night, sixth and seventh graders would sit in the stands and wait and say, well, next year we're going to play against this. We can't even get people to go to that. That is not what education is. There were certain things that were not meant to make money. Politics, religion, art, education. Forget about whether or not you're making money. Put money back in. You've got the administration in place. You've got the teachers in place. You've got the students in place. We're elite. Don't stand in the way. Finish this. Your job is to give us a contract. Finish it. I, I, I'm sorry for coming across aggressive. We're working on that. We're no, you're not. You're not working hard enough. And if you can't do it, then step it down a little bit. To work together. I'm going to tell you this right we now. We need to work together. If you want, I'll show you my contract. I'll show you my pay stub since 2011. And you tell I me know, a I single. No, 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 you stubs. don't. Because no, you I have do. not taken a pay cut for five years. You don't. What don't job understand. do you do? What job do you have? I don't need to tell you what job that I have. Well, I'm asking you a question. I'm you're telling, you're telling you me that I shouldn't be upset that I'm no, taking a pay cut. I didn't tell you you shouldn't be upset. I said that we need to work together. Well, then do better. We're I've gone better. I'm an elite Hi, Bill teacher Howell. according to the state. But you we, do better. We, yes, Run this better. Please stop berating us. We're trying to do better. We're not berating you at all. Hi, Bill Howe. The latest news from your lawyer that it would be net zero, and that is why you did not get a response. We will see you at Super Conciliation. Who is, who is that from, Bill? Because that's, that's, not, that's not from us. That's not, not anything that, that I'm familiar your with. Your lawyer, who is your representative, we will see you at Super Conciliation. So what is, what is it? That, not anything that we're aware of, Bill. You know, I disagree with you. Never use the okay. term. I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know who told you that. If, if it came from somebody over here, then they told you incorrectly. Hi. Um, please don't go. Just listen to this for one second. Um, very nervous. Uh, my first time. I, um, your name you and, and my name is Kim Papalio. I live at 226 Mawa Road. I have two very young kids. We've moved to Mawa because it's a great place. And I'm a teacher also, not in Mawa. I'm in another district who's fighting this horrible fight. And um, I'm, I'm disgusted with your arrogance, your smugness sitting there while that man was, was just talking. And you're shrugging your shoulders at him. And that was so disrespectful. And I am I'm so sorry to the staff that they had to sit here and that, that man sit here and l watch you shrug in his face. And I'm sitting right there so I could see it all. But I wanted to say, you started, I'm sorry, Miss Barron, by saying all the wonderful things that Mawa is doing about how you're bringing all those 11 students to all these fantastic, um, um, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but all these wonderful things that the, the teachers are doing. And I just want to know, how do you think they get there? What is it that gets those students to where they're going? I think it's a combination of the teachers, the parents, and the students. Okay, so the parents are doing their job, and the, and the administration. And the, oh, and it's it, teamwork. It's, it is, but I just, want, I just wanted it to be known from the parents' point of view that I, as a parent, am doing my job. I know my children are doing their job, and I know 100% that the teachers are. So I, absolutely I think it's shameful that seven years this has been going on. My district, I've only been going through this for two or three years, but it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking to hear how these people are, are here trying to just make a living, get by. And it, I'm, just, I'm just so disappointed in, this, in what I moved to. I thought I was moving to this wonderful, wonderful town. And to hear you are how in town. I, I do you know, know that, but to hear how down these teachers are, uh, it's it's so dis it's I'm just very disappointed. I just hope that you guys can come to some sort of an agreement soon, because I know my district's in this super. I can't even say the word super. super, 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 super. <laughs> and uh, it's we definitely want to come to an agreement soon because it's it's trying on both sides. So and I we really it don't hasn't want this been to drag seven on. years. I don't know where the seven years. I just, you know, I, I, yeah. I didn't yeah, I heard that. I think it's some of the smugness that we're saying. It's not smugness. It's just, thank you. We don't understand where some of what they're saying is coming from. So it's not smugness. We're just dumbfounded. Okay, but just so you know, that the, the shrugging of the shoulders is very disrespectful. I apologize if I did not express a neutral view.
And I can understand why you're frustrated. This right. Time. I mean, sort of echoing what Suzanne's saying, we just, there's a, there seems to be two sets of facts out here, and we're disconnected with a certain set of those facts. And I don't know any of the facts. Exactly. I just, I'm a parent and I'm a teacher, and I just want Thank to you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We have a motion to adjourn, please. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher.